I'm Jim Haskell, Senior Portfolio Strategist. In today's podcast, we take you inside our weekly research meeting with our co-CIOs and senior investors, where we discuss the major questions we're wrestling with. What you'll hear is a brief discussion between co-CIO Greg Jensen and senior investors Larry Kofsky and Jason Rotenberg on the different paths for Federal Reserve policy in 2021, given the economic recovery underway and the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines. They also debate the future shape of the yield curve and the implications for inflation hedge assets, such as gold. To begin, Larry gives an overview of how he sees U.S. growth playing out over the next year. If you assume over some period of time that people don't delay, they go back. And so a year, 18 months, you have largely fully normalized. Let's call it a year for rounding purposes. Then what you have is is it is probably everybody's back plus an extra slug of, of credit that came from the fiscal in the U.S. that nobody else got. And that and you can largely pencil that through, given what you know, like assuming the tr- even just the trillion that they're going to do now or 908 is still of that nature that you're going to end up with normalized level of activity and an extra borrowing and spending that occurred in the U.S. relative to other people. And that's what you're probably going to look at a year from now. Why would the Fed want lower real yields if you're going to have a return? If the Fed says, listen, I have a crystal ball that's 100 percent accurate. It's going to have 5 percent unemployment at the end of the year. And and um, inflation, you know, break even yields are already at 190 above where they were before the crisis it, saying that, you know, things are normalized. Do I want lower real yields or do I think 150 base points lower than I started this crisis already easy enough? I would say if, if I'm sitting in their shoes, I think there's a real likelihood to say minus one percent is about the floor. That's pretty easy. I don't think I need to be easier. And then that's a and then the nominal rates rise, largely driven by inflation. Yeah, but a couple of points. A, they're not going to say things like if we have a crystal ball, they won't have a crystal ball. So they're dealing with unprecedented human suffering that the stats are not capturing. And so they shouldn't, and I don't think they will, and history would suggest they don't try to get that far ahead of this thing. And particularly now, where there's so many more reasons to be easy than tight, which is that what they, they're saying, every, like that has that is the ship. Like if they had, were, if it was 1980, in the 1980s and they're worried about inflation spiraling out of control, they would handle that uncertainty differently. But I think the uncertainty here is, A, what this is like. Again, I think the averages are so misleading. Even talk about the unemployment rate, it's just going to depend on the composition of that and all, all of that, where I think they're mm-hmm. not. There, there it will be pockets of terrible suffering. There are pockets of terrible suffering, and there will be for an extended period of time. They're not going to react to those averages in the same way they have. They're going to react to what can we do to help what's going on unless there's a reason we can't do it. I, I think I think that's so clear in what they're doing, and um, and so that's so differentiated, and they're going to lag behind for that reason. Now the market might. The thing I can believe is the bond yields. Perhaps they don't t- they 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 don't go do more QE than they're currently doing. I could um I could believe that that they stay on hold, and the bond yields sell off, and so you get the long dated real yields rising while the short dated, real short rate falls. That steepening of the real yield curve I could see. Yeah. The real short rate falling, though, is still going to be a drag on the real long rate. And I think it's the real short rate is the thing I expect to fall before it rises significantly. And um, then how the real long rate plays out, I, I think that's a, that's a more difficult question. Yeah, I, I guess we were looking at the, op- the other end of the curve. I was thinking about the long rate and the implications on asset prices. Um, and the short, I think the short rate could definitely play out the way you're thinking about it. The long rate could still go up. Yeah, it could. I'm, although I'm just saying the real long rate diverging too much from the real short rate, I think will create opportunities. I think that you're right that there's this possibility you get a steepening of the yield curve as you classically do. People thinking they're going to tighten sooner than they actually likely will. We'll see. Um, and I do think from a out of the money option kind of perspective that I do still like the, you know, the odds that they might have to tighten are probably not priced in as much because the implied balls have actually dropped a lot. I think there's a too little tail pricing, particularly in interest rates. Um, so yeah, no, I agree. But I'm also saying, I think the thing we might disagree on is it's like one in a hundred that they go to negative rates. And I don't, I don't think that's true either. I'm, so I'm not talking so much about directional. I'm talking about they may, things may change a lot more than they, I think they're priced into change. Yeah. But yeah, at least looking at that. Okay. Can I ask a question here, which is this point of view 
you going back and forth done seems to me to be absolutely crucial and it centers around I mean, obviously there's a question about the pent up demand, but it seems like I, I hear it in syncness about that. The question is about how the Fed will react to that. And what Greg is putting out there is what we've been communicating, which is that the Fed is going to accommodate this as much as possible until it literally becomes a pain. We're, we're, I think we're in sync on the Fed will accommodate more than they have. There's just what what level of accommodation is that? Is that allowing um, real yields to rise, real yields to rise out the longer end of the curve and, you know, tighten when they see, you know, 3% BEI and, and allow real yield to rise with inflation a little bit is, you know, real yields at minus one, is that as easy as they're ever going to get? I mean, it's just a question of how much accommodation. I don't think we disagree that they will accommodate more than they have previously. It's a question of how much. And the, uh, I just have a question over, if you have a fully normalized economy and you had a, a, a and you have you know unemployment rates, I, I know there's the averages thing. Do they do they need easier than current policy, or would they let current policy to tighten marginally, which is the easiest it's ever been? And if they allow it to tighten margin, it's very different than if it gets even easier from here. I think the even easier from here in a normalized economy is pretty unlikely. I think that's our diff. Yeah. And I think that the way that that would play out would be, okay, so let's say that you have a recovery that is very strong, stronger than consensus. You do have a, a moderate pickup in inflation. So again, there's a range around all those things. Um, and so let's say inflation breaches their, gets close to maybe breaches their, their target by, by a little bit. But this is, again, they might be saying it's temporary. It's coming out of recession. There's a lot of, of, of suffering. Like, do I expect or would Larry expect that the Fed's going to tighten 50 basis points into that? No, like they're, the, the odds of them raising rates in 2021 are small. I think it would take a material rise in inflation for us to even imagine that that happening, a huge boom and, a, and some rise in inflation. But they're doing 5% of GDP of QE. That's the same as they were doing in the peak of the crisis. And so if this feels like the end of a world war and there's a massive reopening and everyone is spending and credit is booming, uh, will be, they be doing five, like, will they allow the long end of the curve to sell off another 50 or even 75 basis points? Will they tail off QE to some extent by the end of the year? I think that that's within the realm of, of possibility. We don't disagree that that is still like massively easier than they've right. ever been in the history of humankind. Yeah. So I think we all, could all basically agree on that bond thing could happen. And, but I do think the yield curve steepening and the thing that I don't, I think they're going to look at the short rate and you and even the QE as the things they're thinking about whether they're getting tighter or easier, not like, not like the aisle bond yield. Um, so I think their desire to hold is they're going to hold on those policies, particularly on the short rate. But I even think the QE, they're going to be, it, it's going to take a lot for them to signal. Cause again, they're thinking about the double signal, not just what they do, which is, are they going to start a tightening cycle again? And do they want the market to think that, or is it steady as we go until, until there's a problem? OK, you know what? Maybe the Fed won't raise rates like they normally do. Now they're priced to never raise rates for five years into a normalization. But the subtlety is I think they're already priced to stay way behind the economy. If you think that the economy is going to normalize and you're going to have negative one percent uh, really long real yields and then maybe worse. And that's already staying way behind the economy, getting easier. I'm saying the, may, may, the risk is that they may not stay even easier, you know, do that. And just tighten a little bit, which is then. And I think an acid, but if you believe they want to stay behind the economy, I think this is the big thing. Like if you take Europe wants to stay behind the economy, right? What keeps them from staying behind the economy is they can't. The economy doesn't go fast enough. The way to stay behind the economy, you need the economy going. Um, so they can fall faster behind the economy if the economy accelerates than they can if the right. economy doesn't accelerate. So if you believe that, if you believe, A, they want to stay behind the economy, then the biggest thing that's going to dictate how much they get to stay behind the economy is how fast the economy grows. Right. I agree. Um, and, and that's why I think like 2018 is interesting because when we were talking about at the time, they cut off QE, then they tightened 275 base points. That's a really big tightening cycle in response to the fiscal move. If they maybe only tightened 100 basis points, maybe they don't kill the economy. And it still would have been a pretty big tightening relative to what was priced in a year before, plus the shutting off and reversing QE. And so that's the thing that I'm just trying to sort through is, you know, it's a tightening relative to what's priced in could still stay behind the economy. Yeah. yeah. And, but the tightening, but this is what I'm saying. And then if you think of that in real terms and in nominal terms, if they stay behind the economy, right. 
and they tighten less in the economy, the real rates can still fall because that's kind of the gap between them and the economy, which can open up through I, through them easing or through the economy accelerating and them staying behind it, even if they tighten, even if they tighten a little bit, if they're actually staying behind it. Let's just take a step back for a second and imagine that long rates rise or the curve steepens. Is this bearish for inflation hedge assets like gold? If you just take today's conditions and say, is it bullish or bearish? It's like rather than speculate on step two, which is if the bond yield rises, then this, then this, then this. And I'm gonna, if, if you want to bet on bond yield, that's a huge liquid market. Just bet on the bond yield. Um, and for what it's worth, I don't think that'll be the dominant factor for gold. Like meaning the real short rate's really important. It's not just the real long rate. The yield curve steepness is bullish, not bearish. The if it was happening because inflation was rising. Those are different things. If it's happening, I also agree. If it's more normalization, we're going back to, you know, different type of economic cycle where MP3 is no longer necessary and the private sector is operating. Okay, that's more bearish for gold. But I think that's a much more extreme statement than what's really being said, which is okay, you're going to get this, you get this fiscal impulse, you get the virus going away, you get this thing, but now have you fundamentally changed the economy, or are you going to end up in an economy that's stuck again? after those, those things pass through. We hope you enjoyed this peek inside our research engine. Thank you very much.